Hope your week is going great or has gone great. Um, so you got a diagnosis. So here's me. I, I see all the time cancer, allergies, autoimmune stuff. And I just think to myself, maybe if you guys knew these three things, maybe you would look at things differently. So I thought, let's experiment and see. I think there's about 1,800 of you who are friends with me, right? Stats will tell you that um, about 600 of you have some sort of sinister diagnosis, right, like cancer. But stats will also tell you about half of you have some sort of autoimmune something. And the rest of the stats will tell you, I believe it's like 70% of you have allergies or whatever of some kind. And so I was thinking today, you know, you guys get this or people get these diagnoses and they don't know what to do. You go to the guy in the white coat with the big old alphabet after his name and you're like, oh, what should I do? And yet that guy calls his thing a practice. And here's me. Well, that's dumb. Why would you go to someone who's just practicing? It's not yoga for heaven's sakes, right? You wanna to go to an expert. And yet I think the only expert in this situation is our God and then us, cause it's our bodies. So I'm gonna give you guys some serious tools before, cause if one more person texts me, I got fill in the blank, what should I do, Jen? And my business tells me I'm not allowed to treat, actually I'm not allowed to like recommend, diagnose, cure. I'm supposed to tell you, you should go see a medical professional, which in my mind is the dumbest thing that we're supposed to tell you guys. Cause hell no. Like why would I tell you to go talk to your doctor about this? Chances are the reason why you have blank is because of your doctor. Look, I'm gonna make somebody mad. I, I realize this and that's okay. Um, but, but being angry kind of motivates us to do something, doesn't it? Okay. Actually, no, I'm not going to make anybody mad. Cancel that. What am I with my conscious languaging? Y'all are going to accept this. All 1800 of you. Okay. Deal. Three things. I hope you grabbed your paper. I hope you grabbed a pen or a pencil, a crayon, whatever, poke your finger with blood, write it in there. Whatever you need to do. You need to write these things down. Share this video with your friends. Better yet, learn this stuff and then go do your own video. That's better. Many times people, uh, they wanna come to an expert. They wanna know, okay, I just need to know what to do because I've never been there. And so you might ask somebody who's been there. Chances are your doctor hasn't been there. They've just read a whole bunch of books. And here's the deal guys, uh, I'm nine years into homeschooling and people have said, how do you homeschool? How do you do physics? Blah, blah, blah. I just read books. That's what teachers do. It's, it ain't that hard. They just read it for longer. Doctors are the same thing. And yet God designed our bodies with vastly different DNA. No two of us are alike. And yet, oh, oh, I'm about to preach. I just got this word, guys. Listen up. No two of us are alike. And yet we go to a doctor and say, hey, doctor, what should I do for my blah, blah, blah? Oh, well, all my patients use. The hell is that? No two of us are alike. Guys, I can't with this. And yet, why wouldn't we use plants? Why wouldn't we use herbs? Why wouldn't we use something that God created that are adaptogenic in our bodies that help our DNA do the things? No, we gotta go to some fool doctor and be like, oh gee, I wonder what I should do for my own freaking body. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not gonna get angry today, I promise. Three things. Number one, take a vacation from your doctor. Or get an advocate. I have to tell you, when my son was diagnosed with malignant melanoma, my friend Sandy Tang said, hey, I'll go with you if you want to the doctor. And I was like, okay, whatever. You guys, that was the most valuable 
thing that ever could happen to me. She brought a notebook, she brought pen and paper, she asked all these really super smart questions because I was like, ah, my kid has cancer, what do I do? Doctor, help us, save my son. And she was like, no emotional attachment, asking the serious questions, asking the right questions. And then later I could look back at those questions and be like, wait, what? Hold on, pause. So if you have a diagnosis, even if it's something like from allergies to autoimmune issue to cancer, PS, all three of those things are just the same. They're just your body having to come apart. So it is, neither one is worse than the other. I promise you, hear me, hear me. I come from a background of having a child with cancer, having a little girl with her organs all come apart crazy, having a uh, husband who was on crazy meds for a long time who is now completely healed of depression and spiraling and all of that. Yes, my friends, you can get off your crazy meds. My husband did it. I can tell you how, but that's another topic for another day. Um, allergies, we all, Mark and I had allergies terrible and they actually got better before we moved to the Northeast and we don't have allergies anymore. So I say all this to you because when you take a vacation from your doctor and you, or you bring an advocate with you to ask the right questions when you're not emotionally attached, you can think more clearly. You're not having his voice in your head. You're not having that fear gripping your heart, guys. We know fear is not from God. We know who it's from. Fear's a liar. There's a whole song written about it. So if you are listening to a medical professional that practices, I still don't understand that, uh, a medical professional that's practicing on you and your children, and you're listening to them motivated by fear, I'm gonna have to ask you, why? When ha ever has it ever gone well to do something out of fear? You wouldn't tell your child to do that, right? And if you would, I might have to question your life choices. Number two, while you're on vacation, or you have your advocate, helper, friend who is not emotionally attached to your stuff. Know, learn, research. Let me do this. Research, no, no. <laughs> research, learn, and then know. How's that order? Research, learn, and then know. How your body, why your body makes fill in the blank. Babies are not born with allergies. Did y'all know that? They're perfect. The way that God creates them, they come out your body and they're perfect just as they are. Just as they are. And then they get allergies. And Christian, if you come out and be like, ah, fallen world, blah, blah, blah. That's a load of crap. Yeah, I, it is fallen world. However, it's the stuff that we do in our fallen world to our babies that create these things. You hearing me? You hearing me, people? Thank you. So knowledge removes fear. I've been watching this video on fear all week because it's a class I'm taking and he's just simply talking about the fear of flying. And he's like, once I understood that the, the air wraps around the wings and it like lifts the, with enough thrust, like a rock can move is what he says. And the, the air wraps around the wings. He's like, plane's not gonna fall out of the sky. It's all good. Oh, and he's right. If we understand, if we have knowledge, it removes that fear, doesn't it? You guys know I'm right. So when Zion was diagnosed with malignant melanoma, I was like all freaked out, ah, oh my God, my kid, blah, blah, blah. And then when I stopped, I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. If I thought, I thought to myself, if I can figure out how cancer is made, now I'm just gonna figure out how to unmake it. Like, isn't that a thing? Cancer is not like a cake. Right, like you bake a cake and you put all these ingredients to it, it makes something completely different. You can't unmake a cake. You can smash up a cake, but you can't ever extract the eggs, the milk, the flour, the butter, the whatever goes into a cake. Allergies are not like a cake. Allergies and cancer and any kind of condition that your body is being inundated with is just simply your body is having a bit of a come apart. It's not being fed the right things. And so you just figure out how to unmake it. See what I'm saying? But we treat all of these things that are not, they're undesirable conditions in our body. We treat it like it is a cake. Like I cannot undo this. I, there's no cure for cancer. 
I sat across from my little cousin. I said something about that cancer. She's like, well, there's no cure for cancer. I'm like, I almost said this. You bet your sweet ass there is. There actually is. I didn't say that. Please hear me. But in my mind, I'm like, oh, please. Of course there is. Of course there is. Your body was designed to heal itself, my friends. You give it the right tools, it's going to do the things. It can't help it. It's how it was designed. You hear me? This is the truth. What you hear facts are, there's no cure for cancer. That's not truth. I learned that at church on Sunday, by the way. Anything in life, you might be hearing facts, but it may not be truth. There's a huge difference, huge difference. Once my husband learned why he suffered with chronic depression, why his brain was chemically imbalanced, he didn't just throw his hands up in the air like, oh, I guess I'll be on Lexapro my whole life. Mm -mm. He did something about it. Once he learned that, oh, this simple little thing, this IV treatment we had cured his sleep apnea. You heard me, right? Cured his sleep apnea. Well, I'm going to do this other thing to help my body stay in that in, um, system, in that condition to where I don't have sleep apnea anymore. That's the God honest truth, guys. You know how he found out he didn't have sleep apnea anymore? God broke his machine on the way home from Ecuador. I love how our God works. Number three. Number three, pray. Pray, my friends. If you don't know the God that I know, then I'm going to tell you what, you are missing out and you are having fun wrong, but that's your choice. But if you know the God that I know and you're still throwing your hands up like, oh my gosh, I got this diagnosis, I'm going to say to you, uh, sir, ma'am, why don't you go to the God who created your body? He still is in the business of healing, as it turns out. Same, yesterday, today, and forever. So you just talk to him. But I'm going to tell you what, if your mind is set on not believing that God can and will heal you outside of a doctor's protocol, then God will only use that doctor's protocol. I'm gonna say that again. If your mindset is set on that you will only be healed if you listen to your doctor, then God will only use that in your life. He is a perfect gentleman. He will not force his healing upon you. In the Bible, it says, Jesus didn't do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. That'll preach. I'm just telling you guys what the Bible says. I'm not, I'm not here to like interpret it wrong. I just read it and I'm like, oh, there it is. There it is. But if maybe, if maybe, there's a chance that you're thinking, wait, does my child not have, doesn't need to be on Zyrtec their whole life? Do I not need to be on Lexapro forever? Is it possible that I don't have to do chemotherapy? I will say to you, my friend, if you think that, you better get on your knees and ask your God, is this true? Could it be? Is there another way? God, you know what he will say? Yes, oh my God. I created you to heal yourself, your body, your cells. Oh my word. Do you know doctors were not a thing up until like about 150 years ago? Do you know nobody trusted doctors? Do you know that doctors are actually the reason why women died after childbirth? Because they wouldn't wash their freaking hands? Because that was beneath them? I'm just going to let that marinate. And now all of a sudden, in 2018, we're like, you're amazing, because you went to school and you read books. Guess what? I went to school and I read books too. So did you. Guys, you are living in this body. You birthed those children. You adopted those children. No one knows them better but you and God. I'm just gonna hear to tell you. All right, now you're probably like, well, what should I do? Tell you a couple of things and I gotta go. God designed our bodies to heal itself if given the proper tools. Now, you can't just be sitting there and be like, well, you can't. That's another topic for another day. Sit there and be like, I'm totally healed from whatever thing and then your body does the things. But again, that's another topic for another day. 
So here's some things that you do need to do. If you were diagnosed with blah, 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 allergies, autoimmune stuff, you got the cancer, your hips coming apart, whatever, whatever it is, remove all the toxins from your life. All the toxins. I sat across from, she's, she, you guys don't know who she is, my cousin. She's like, but I like the smell of that detergent. Oh, really? I'm sorry. You like your kid having allergies? I'm, I'm just saying, which is better? Which is better? Remove all the toxins. It's not that daggum hard. It's not. It's just like a simple swap, right? You got that app, the Think Dirty app, just boom. Okay, no, that's bad. Okay, no, that's bad. Okay, I'm just gonna get this. It's not hard, my friends. <sighs> From allergies to cancer, remove the toxins. I told you, Mark and I have no allergies anymore. You people in Texas who are dying because of allergies, cancel that. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry to speak that on you. You people in Texas who are uh, having a challenge with your allergies, wouldn't it be wonderful to walk outside and breathe and be like, I love fall, I love spring. Third thing you can do is clean your diet. Oh, I know, I told, was told a long time ago, don't touch people's taste buds, and I won't. I won't, I won't, I won't. But here's what I'm gonna tell you. Feed your body with foods and supplements that are designed to do the things you're asking your body to do. I'll say that again, because you need to write this down. Feed your body with foods and supplements to do the things that your body, that are, excuse me, that are designed to do the things that your body, help your body do the things it was already designed to do. Cleansing your colon, I think, oh, I didn't do that video here. That was in my holy group. <laughs> Y'all missed out on that one. Um, cleansing your colon. That'll fix your write up, I promise you. Take some supplements to help that. Eat some foods to help that. It's not that hard. If it comes from a box, you probably should throw it in the trash. It's probably not gonna help you. If there's more than five ingredients in a given something, probably should throw it in the trash. That's all. If it takes three to five days to get out your colon, you probably shouldn't need it. Forever? No, not forever, just while you're trying to heal your body. That's all. Last thing is, remove that mind mess. Guys, I have shared with you so many times, some of you have sat in my class. Get rid of your mind mess. <sighs> Don't know if it's proven, but there's a huge thought around the idea when there is dis-ease in the body, now you have disease. Now you have disease. So if you have any kind of dis-ease in your mind, you worry, you overthink, you fret, um, you get angry, you don't forgive, you don't let go, any of this stuff, it will come to bite you in the proverbial butt, I promise you. I promise you. My Jonah, apparently he had a stressful day because last night he was having some, shall we say, some poop issues. And I muscle tested him and you know he was testing for stress away. And I'm like, brother, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it wasn't his belly, he was stressed out. I'm telling you, that'll preach too. Learn how to help your body overcome its current undesired condition. You have, I'm gonna say this very slowly, if this is the only thing you get from this, you have all the power, you already have all the knowledge, and after all, doctors just read a lot of books, so can you. You already have everything at your fingertips that you need to uh, diagnose, to treat, and to cure. I'll leave you with this. I've had folks say, well, I'm just gonna go to the doctor so they can tell me what's wrong so that I can use my whatever, all my natural stuff, to fix the things. Can I just caution you on that? You know what's wrong. You do. If your body is starting to have some sort of thing, you just sit there and be quiet, and you go to step number three, just jump ahead to that before you go get a diagnosis and say, God, what's going on? What's going on in here? And he'll tell you. Now he might say, you know, I need to go, go see somebody, go get some blood work done. You have some vitamin deficiency, so you need to see what that is. Because obviously we can't read how many 
deficiencies we might have vitamin wise. But he might speak to you and say, hey, you know that fight you got into a few months ago? It's causing you some back problems. You know how that person was super demanding on your life? It's causing you some esophagus issues. You have all the power, you have all the knowledge, and after all, doctors read a lot of books, so can you, my friends. In this country, I know all 1,800 of you are already reading. Go grab you a book and get to work. All right, guys, take care of yourselves.